Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 22 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll take a look at VeriSpeed and how we can use it to play with the tempo and pitch of an entire project. Now, VeriSpeed actually comes from the tape world. Uh, VeriSpeed is a tape playback function that allows you to increase or decrease uh, the playback speed of tape. Um, and essentially, as I said in a, a previous video, when you decrease the playback speed of tape, what happens is the tempo goes slower and the pitch also drops. When you increase the playback speed of tape, pitch goes up and so does the tempo. Um, so in the digital world, VeriSpeed essentially does the same thing, uh, except there's a few other parameters that we can uh, play around with that we, we couldn't do in the tape world. So before we even start working with it, I want to show you guys something that I should have showed you in the previous uh, one of the previous videos, and that is to go to Logic Pro 10 Preferences Advanced Tools. Now, this option here opens up a... Uh, window that allows you to hide or show your advanced uh, tools and uh, caused some confusion in some of the previous videos because people were saying, hey, uh, Music Tech Help Guy, I don't see that option in my, in my version of Logic. Well, this is how you can turn it on. Uh, for some reason, the advanced tools are turned off uh, for some people when they purchase Logic. I don't know why. For me, they were always on, so I never had to turn them on. Um, but when you turn this off, it essentially turns Logic into a glorified version of GarageBand. So yeah, you want to make sure those are on for all of my videos, including all of the additional options down here. Make sure those are all on. Okay, so now that that's on, VeriSpeed will actually be a function that we can use. Um, next, we're going to go up to our display up here, and we're going to change it to the custom view. And next, we are going to show VeriSpeed up here by right-clicking somewhere on the gray, on the, like next to the control bar here, and say uh, and choose Customize Control Bar and Display. And what we're going to do is under the L uh, LCD column here, we're going to make sure VeriSpeed is on. And I'm actually going to turn off a few things here just to uh, clear up some space, and then hit OK. And what you should see is you'll see something that says speed only and then 0%. This is, these are your VeriSpeed controls. Um, also on the right side here in the control bar, you'll see a button that we can toggle on or off VeriSpeed. So I'm going to turn that on and you'll see uh, speed only here turns to uh, orange for us. Now before I start playing around with VeriSpeed, let's listen to uh, this, the song as is and then we'll change the tempo of the song and the pitch of the song. So here's the, the song at the original tempo of 85 BPM. All right, so you can see there that it's a combination of uh, audio, uh, there's a, a vocal part, uh, acoustic guitar, and MIDI. There's a, just a MIDI bass and some uh, MIDI piano down here. Now, what this speed only option up here does is it allows us to change the playback speed of our song without affecting pitch. Um, there's actually three modes for VeriSpeed. If you click on speed only up here, you'll see this menu pop up and you can choose speed only, VeriSpeed, and VeriSpeed in MIDI. Uh, with speed only, again, like I said, it affects the tempo of our project, but doesn't actually affect the speed of our project. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And uh, we're given a percentage here. So let's bump this up by 10%. And what'll happen is the song will play back 10% faster. We can also double click and type, uh, type in a negative value as well. Let's try negative 10%. Now 
Another way we can change this is instead of in percentages, if you click right here on the percentage, you can change the VeriSpeed unit to something else. So let's click on that and we're going to choose resulting tempo. And this allows us to basically pick a specific tempo in contrast to the original tempo of 85 BPM. So if I just double click on this, let's make it go a little faster. Let's make it go like 100 BPM. And likewise, you can double click and choose a lower BPM, maybe like 70. Now, what this is really useful for um, is if you are trying to uh, maybe, there's really two, two useful functions here, here that I can see. And there's probably others as well that other people use, but these are the two things I use it for. Uh, the first is to slow down the, 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 you know, globally the tempo of the entire session without having to use flex time like we did in the last video so that a musician can maybe practice the song at a slower BPM. Maybe they're having uh, trouble uh, playing in a certain lead or a certain uh, chord progression or a certain drum part. You can slow down the BPM for them so they can practice at a lower speed and then slowly increase the tempo uh, until you get to the actual tempo of the song. The second function here is to maybe be able to uh, match uh, the tempo of a session to maybe another session. Maybe you're trying to take a session that you have, bounce it out at a different tempo, and then match it up with maybe another song as a sample or a loop or whatnot. And maybe another option could be to slightly bump up the tempo a little bit, maybe here from 85 to 90, just a slight tempo change to maybe create like a, like a radio version of the song, a radio uh, cut of the song that's a little bit faster, and therefore the song's gonna be a little bit shorter. All right, our other options here under, if you click, again, if you click on speed here, you can choose VeriSpeed. Now with VeriSpeed, this affects both the tempo of the project and the pitch of the project. So if I choose that, um, and what I'm gonna do is, um, you can use the percentage and resulting tempo for this as well. Um, let's make it go a little bit faster. Let's make it go 90 BPM. Well, let's make, let's go 100, 100 BPM. So not only is the song going to play back 15 uh, beats per minute faster, it's also, uh, the pitch is also going to be shifted up. So let's listen to what this sounds like. So this is an example of a playback speed change where both the tempo of the project and the pitch of the project is shifted up or down uh, from the resulting tempo. Um, you can also change this uh, in uh, with a, a detuning option and a tuning reference option. Now when you use the detuning option, it shows you specifically how many semitones up or down you are bumping up the music or bumping down the pitch. Um, a, if you don't know what a semitone is, a semitone is essentially just a musical half step. So if I, like for instance, if this song was in the key of C and I said, let's increase it by one semitone, you're now in the key of C sharp. And if I were to, um, you know, double click and say negative one, well, you're going to go one key back on the piano. So instead of being in the key of C, now you're going to be in the key of B. So um, you can adjust the song's tuning to any key you like here. So um, again, I don't, I don't know what the, uh, the, the, the tuning of this song is or what the key of this song is offhand, but if I were in C and I say, let's add three semitones to it, now we're in the key of D sharp or E flat. Um, so you can pick a specific tuning option here and not only will the tune play up or down, it also in, uh, increases or decreases the tempo. Or maybe we want to go down, say, two semitones, a whole step down to B flat or whatever. Now, from a vocal standpoint, it's really going to make your vocals sound chipmunky if you push them up a lot. Um, and it's really going to really change the quality of the person's voice. So I wouldn't recommend using this for uh, music with vocals in it. But one thing you can do here is you can force a song to um, match maybe the key 
of another project, you know, so you can bounce it out and drop it in as a loop. Um, so that's one thing you can do with it. So again, VeriSpeed uh, from a pitch standpoint is more of a transformational thing. It's not a, a functional, uh, it's not a functional option to use uh, within a song. Especially when you're, again, when you're working with uh, the VeriSpeed option as opposed to the speed option. Uh, the other thing we can do here is instead of choosing a semitones reference, we can choose tuning reference. Now what this does is it references the uh, standard tuning of A440. So when uh, basically when VeriSpeed is off or set to its default value, your reference tuning is 440 hertz. So if you're not familiar with the significance of 440 hertz, 440 is the A above middle C on the keyboard. And it's essentially the standard tuning scale or the, not scale, but tuning system that we've used for, well, at least in the U.S., for the last uh, 80 or 90 years. Uh, prior to that, there were tuning systems at 442, 443, a little higher, and also systems a little lower, like uh, 432. So what this does is it shifts the entire song up or down in hertz rather than in uh, semitones. So let's say that we want to shift our song down to kind of uh, 432 and um, you know, if you're, uh, if you want to know the significance of 432, just do a simple YouTube or Google search, but 432 is seen to be a more perfect, uh, tuning system. I don't know if it actually makes the music sound any better or worse. Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. Uh, but, uh, we can shift the music down to 432 if we want to, but again, keep in mind, we're not just adjusting pitch here. We're also adjusting the playback speed. So the song is going to play back a little slower as well as playing, uh, playing back a little lower. And we're hardly going to be able to tell the difference here. Uh, there's only an eight Hertz difference here. So let's try something more drastic like, uh, 420 hertz, a full 20 hertz lower. Maybe let's try going a little higher, like 490. So that's VeriSpeed uh, in a nutshell. All right, now the last VeriSpeed mode is called VeriSpeed and MIDI. Now, before I even start talking about this, I'm just going to let you know that in my opinion, I frankly think that this mode is completely useless. So, I mean, you'll never use it. Um, so if you decide to stop the video now and move on to the next episode, you'll be fine. You're not really missing out on anything. However, if you want to see me break character and rant for a few more minutes, well, you can keep watching the video. So various speed and MIDI, which I never use, I never use this mode. Um, if you go and read the logic Mu user manual says various speed and MIDI is used to emulate classic tape VeriSpeed and simultaneously transpose non-drum MIDI tracks quantized to semitones. So when I read that statement, what I think is, oh, as opposed to the VeriSpeed mode, this mode just moves MIDI data up and down uh, rather than shifting the audio output of instruments up and down, at least non-drum MIDI tracks. So if I had a MIDI piano track, it's just going to shift the MIDI input up and down rather than the audio output up and down, which that could have an advantage. You know, when you move MIDI data up and down, you're um, not having to transpose the audio of that synthesizer, which is going to result in a better quality playback. Now, that would be great if it was actually true. In all actuality, I cannot hear the difference between VeriSpeed and VeriSpeed and MIDI. Um, and keep in mind, before I made this video, I went through at least 50 or 60 examples trying to hear the difference between VeriSpeed and VeriSpeed and MIDI, and I just cannot hear it. And keep in mind, I think I have a pretty good ear. I have a master's degree in music. I've been playing music and playing the piano since I was eight years old. So I've been doing this for like 20 years, and I think I have a pretty good ear, and I cannot hear the difference between the two. So... Um, Okay, so let me just show you what I mean. Uh, what I've got out here is uh, just a drum track. It's an ultra beat preset. Even the pattern is a preset. 
Um, and then down here I have a piano instrument, just a simple little uh, C minor piano melody. Uh, so let's listen to what this sounds like without Vera Speed on. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, using Vera Speed and MIDI, let's bump this up five semitones. So what's going to happen, what should happen, if I'm interpreting the definition from the logic manual correctly, which I'm probably not, um, what should happen is that the audio output of our drum instrument should be shifted up five semitones, and the MIDI input of the Steinway Grand Piano track should be shif shifted up five semitones. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Okay, it's in fact higher, but let's try just regular old Vera speed. There's no difference. I cannot hear the difference between the two of them. Even if I just solo out the Steinway here, um, let's uh, let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, I'll solo out the Steinway. Put us on Vera Speed, and I'll do this without even talking in between. I'll switch from Vera Speed to Vera Speed and MIDI. So here's Vera Speed. There's literally no difference between them. Um, even if I really, really increase this to like 12 semitones up, that's bumping it up an entire octave, we really should hear some obvious digital artifacts here on the speed and pitch option that we shouldn't hear in VeriSpeed and MIDI. Again, if I'm reading the definition uh, correctly. Again, I don't hear the difference. So um, now Trust me, I understand the difference between transposing drums and transposing, um, uh, you know, non-drum instruments. You know, on a drum instrument like this, you know, if you're you're looking at a piano roll editor in the sense of what key is what drum, you know. Uh, for instance, C1 in most drum kits is a kick drum. Now, I realize that when you transpose a kick drum up to maybe E1, you're changing it to usually some sort of a snare drum or a clap or something like that. Um, so you don't want to transpose the MIDI data of a drum instrument because it's all the notes, the voices aren't going to be in the right place. Uh, whereas, you know, if you take something like the Steinway here and just shift it up, um, you know, three steps up to E minor instead of C minor, you're just putting it in a different key. So I understand the difference between, you know, pitch shifting and transposing drums versus non-drums, but according to at least the way I'm interpreting the the definition it's not doing what it says it does so so that's my little rant on VeriSpeed and MIDI I never use it and I'll probably never use it um, and if anyone knows exactly what this does please contact me and let me you know send me a private message I'll do an addendum to this video I'll even give you credit for the addendum video um, I, I mean, I do want to know what it does, uh, but I just can't hear any difference. And I've searched Apple's website. I've searched through Google. I cannot get a, a good answer on what the difference between VeriSpeed and MIDI and VeriSpeed is. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks again for watching.